Hi, this is Bob with his handheld camera again. You may notice I wait a few seconds before I start talking. That's because for some reason when I put these on YouTube, it seems to clip off two or three seconds at the beginning. So if I start talking right away, it's not on the video. So I decided, uh, oh golly, two years ago I think it was, to build another Paraset. I had previously made a YouTube video on building a Paraset that was as close to the original as I could construct. So you can look at that one too, that's much earlier done, like I say, that was done a few years ago. And like I say, it's uh, much closer to the original. This time, with, the, uh, with being quarantined in and all, I decided to make this one with what I had on hand, if possible. And so I started out building the power supply. And you may notice it's built on a bread pan, which I had laying around here. I've got several bread pans. I usually use them for sorting parts. But then I thought, hey, I can turn that over and I can use it to make a power supply. It makes a nice little chassis. So that's what I did. Uh, the transformer, I bought at a ham fest. Uh, it gives me a 400 volts DC out, which was really lucky because uh, the Parasets operate on 390 volts DC out. So this transformer was just right. I think I paid $5 for it at a ham fest and this I purchased three or four years ago. Uh, the connectors for the Paraset are, uh, are these banana connectors here. I did not have a green one to be used for the ground, so I used a blue one. Uh, and the red, of course, is the B plus, and the yellow is the filament. And then I put an on-off toggle switch on there. And this is a neon bulb to indicate the presence of B plus. And then here is the cord with the uh, socket to plug into the Paraset. Also purchased at a ham fest. So let's take a look underneath here. And I can turn the light on over here. There we go. Much better with the light on. So, I was going to show you inside here. Here's the uh, rectifiers. They're real small. Little guys down here. There's three of them in series on each side of the uh, transformer output for the high voltage. And I did that to uh, uh, because if you... Uh, if you know, uh, you have to have these somewhat balanced, and uh, you can put resistors on them to balance them. But uh, since we're working with 400 volts here, and since we uh, have 1,000 volt diodes, I put three of them in series on each side of that transformer winding so that I have plenty of voltage there. So I didn't worry about balancing them. I just put three in series on each side. These are 400 volt uh, 450 volt uh, 100 microfarad capacitors. I got those on eBay. I bought a lot of this stuff on eBay but it took a period of time to do it. I started this project like I say about two years ago. So I, I have been accumulating parts throwing them into uh, well in this case I just threw them into the bread pan and then uh, when it got time to build I just uh, got the parts out and started building. And what else? I used a 200 ohm 20 watt resistor here instead of, an, of a uh, choke in the power supply. I do have a choke, but uh, the resistors I have found work really nice. 200 ohms or 500 ohms or 300 ohms uh, 20 watt resistor makes for a real nice uh, a choke, a, a substitute for a choke, let's say that. And then down here uh, you will see there's a transistor down here. There's a full wave bridge rectifier down there. Rectifies the 6.3 volts AC coming out for the filament. This is a 2200 microfarad capacitor. There's another one right here on the base of the transistor. This is called a humbucker circuit. A humbucker circuit. And that was uh, introduced to me by Ron Dillon, one of the engineering staff working at uh, Heathkit when I was there. And he came up with that circuit. I have used it many, many times uh, since. Thank you, Ron. And uh, it's a really cute circuit. Now, I made a schematic of this, which I will show you here. See if I can get the whole thing in there. 
here's where we here's where we come in here with the uh, AC and you can pause your uh, you can pause your YouTube video there and uh, and you can copy this down yourself I made it out of pencil I make all these things out of pencil because I usually wind up erasing things several times before I get done here's 110 coming in or 120 volts with a standard three pin grounded plug I like to use those grounded plugs uh, so I don't get a shock and uh, a fuse of course uh, and then a power switch this is the primary of the power transformer the two black leads these are the two red leads here which is the high voltage this is the red yellow which goes to ground right there and then here's my three diodes in series on each side like I say I didn't have equalizing resistors or I didn't want to bother with them so I just put three diodes in each side the diodes were very very cheap on eBay I think I bought a hundred of them for like 295 or something like that and then here is a hundred microfarad at 450 volts there the first capacitor uh, it's a capacity input uh, filter uh, this is the 200 ohm 20 watt resistor which I say is substituting for a choke and then here's the output capacitor right here and then here is my 400 volts DC for the Paraset the Parasets uh, are rated at 390 volts out of the original power supply so this is pretty doggone close to the original and I just lucked out on that transformer because honestly it was the only one I had and I put it on here and came out with 400 like 412 volts or something like that I just labeled it here as 400 volts and uh, here's my neon bulb I got a 270 K ohm resistor going to ground that's kind of backwards normally you put the resistor on the hot side and then this runs right to ground but it doesn't make any difference uh, 270 K that cuts the uh, voltage down for the neon bulbs because the neon bulbs actually operate at 60 some volts and you hit them with 400 volts and the neon bulbs just gonna go pop so it'll blow so anyhow you need that resistor in there 270 K it can be a half watt I got a one watt in there because that's what I had in the junk box I made it a point on all of this project all the way through to use what I have so it deviates quite a bit from what you would see in other Paraset construction articles. This is a full wave bridge for the filaments, the center tap on that transformer which is there. You see you got a green wire and a green wire that's your 6.3 volts and then here you've got uh, a green yellow which is the center tap. You can use that center tap uh, to reduce hum by grounding it if you do not use this to generate uh, DC voltage so that's not used at all no connection on that center tap and I've got a full wave bridge here now the bridge I use is a uh, it's it's in a little block it was already made up and uh, but I show the individual diodes here so you can use individual diodes you can use the same diodes that's used for these up here and then this feeds down here to a 2200 microfarad capacitor uh, filtering there and then this is the humbucker circuit and I didn't uh, I didn't write it down here but this right here is a 10 ohm resistor right there 10 ohm resistor so anyhow this feeds into the collector of a transistor a 2N3055 you can use most any NPN transistor that will handle a few amps so that goes right to the collector there the base is connected then to the collector through this 10 ohm resistor right there and then right here you've got another 2200 ohm capacitor to ground and what happens is this transistor is acting then as a a uh, multiplier to multiply the filtering action of this capacitor and that really does a super job and then you take the uh, voltage that you want for the filaments off of the emitter and I got another 0.1 microfarad there just for RF filtering and this is where your voltage comes out for the filaments for the Paraset and I only get about uh, five and a quarter volts or so around let's just say around five volts at this point going to the filaments but those old tubes were designed to operate uh, on filaments uh, that varied quite a bit from what you get 
uh, uh, in your circuits sometimes. They, they used them in cars uh, where the voltage would sometimes run up close to 8 volts and also in, in some of the older cars the voltage would drop down lower to 5 volts or so. So the tubes work just fine if you get 5 volts out here that's no problem. Uh, didn't have any trouble with that at all. So this is the, uh, the, the uh, power supply. Thought I would start with the power supply because uh, I, I do these uh, videos and I no sooner f finish the video than I get a bunch of emails from guys saying, well, how about a, a schematic? Uh, how about a power supply and a schematic on how to build a power supply? So this is what I've got. So like I say, you can pause your, uh, your uh, YouTube video. You can copy these things. You can print them out. Uh, on this power supply to get the schematic or you can just draw it uh, that's like I did I just stood here and drew it just a few minutes ago and I, I just drew it on a piece of uh, well it's actually this is a, a manila file folder which I find nice for stuff like that so that's the power supply and uh, uh, here's the fuse uh, the switch the neon bulb uh, here is my first 100 microfarad at 450 volts the 200 ohm resistor uh, right down in there are the three banana sockets and uh, something I didn't mention that I didn't show on here how about that is I didn't show the bleeder resistor holy cow which is one two three four three hundred and thirty ohm resistors and I'm gonna put it here on the schematic as one resistor But they're actually four 330K resistors at one watt. There we are. I just drew them in there. Four 330K at one watt. You can see I just crudely put them all together there. And I marked it here, bleeder. And, uh, and uh, put that on there. Now, I put, I put that in there right when I built that power supply. But you know what I did? After I finished the power supply and put it onto the Paraset, uh, I was working on the Paraset, and so I pulled this off on the connector on the Paraset. And the reason I have the socket side here is so you couldn't get a shock if it was turned on. Well... I charged up the capacitors in the Paraset. I've got these same kind of capacitors in the Paraset. They were charged up and I picked up the Paraset and I touched that pin sticking out, a B plus pin, and wow did I get a shock. So I put another 330K ohm resistor uh, in the Paraset itself to ground where the B plus comes in to bleed off that voltage off of, the, off of that capacitor. It's only a 10 microfarad capacitor, but man, it gave me a shock. So that's it, guys. This is the project here. I think it came out really good. That's the power supply. And in the next uh, installment, uh, part two here, we'll go and discuss the uh, Paraset itself. That's it, guys. Uh, 73s. Everybody keep healthy.